morning to everyone. Good to see you. Glad to have you here. We give God the glory for this day. This is our eighth month, eighth day of 2021. And certainly we can say God has been kind and good and merciful towards us. As we are yet dealing with the reality of a pandemic, I thank you for being here. And I that everyone continues to be safe, continuously mass, continues to take care of yourself and look to the Lord for all wisdom and knowledge and spiritual understanding. I pray blessings that God divine favor and grace and all grace will abound towards you in every way that you exist and that he will continue to hide us in his sacred place. I pray that our hearts and minds is towards him and that he's first and foremost in our lives. He's number one. So let your heart be encouraged. And I speak to you as a people who's in a marriage. A people who is in a marriage. You are a wife. And God have always sought to have a marriage. God have always sought to have a companion in the earth realm. And this is why he gave his image and his likeness. He said, let us make man. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. As representatives in the similitude to rule, to reign, to dominate. God have always wanted a relationship or a companion with you and I. So I pray that our hearts is towards him in every way, in a changing world, in a changing time. I believe that we're going to see some more events of things that's going to happen, and that's why it's going to be important that you stay close as a wife. And in the Bible, you're going to find out that there is two types of women. One is a wife, and one is a whore. And it's in the book of Revelation. She called the great whore. And because it's creation, these are humans and angelic beings that he created. And in, in that, we find that some have not been faithful. So you're going to find the great whore. She's known as Babylon the Great. And named her that for a reason. Then you're going to find a wife who was loyal, who was faithful, who was committed, who wouldn't let go of his love. Wouldn't let go of his hand. So as we go forward today, it is about learning. It's about feeding you. It's about giving knowledge and wisdom and counsel that's from above. As we are living in a changing world as mortals, we are living today and setting in a body that has an end to it. Everything that you look at about us is ending. Black hair ends white. Some hair disappear like mine. Some knees quit, some hips stop, kidneys stop, because we're mortals. And mortal just simply means it has an end to it. It is also corrupt. The body you live in is a corrupt body. It means that it's a body that can alter at any time. It's young, it won't stay. It's pretty, it won't stay. Many things about this that you and I need to understand. So this moment today has to do with a relationship that you have with God. We don't know who's next. We don't. But it's been appointed until it's once to die. Nothing wrong with dying because in the body of Christ, we don't have death, we have sleep. And so if that day should come, I pray your heart is encouraged to know that there's a plan for you, his wife, in eternity. And so I ask that you continue to keep the faith, stay close, love him first and love him foremost, more than anything or anybody. So... I'm, I'm glad again to have you here to be with us out here for our service today. And for those of us who are live screaming, I praise God for you being with us as well. Again, my heart is to encourage your heart that belongs to God. Your mind, your soul, that's been purchased. A seal that's been placed upon you as the servants of the Most High God. So today I want to encourage us I want us to go back to the book of Revelation as we focus on heaven. We focus on eternity of life. We focus on going home. We focus on new heaven and a new earth as we transition. Things that we should know and understand. I want us to look at this wife and note what she did. 
and note and learn from this wife because the wife is actually people who's in a relationship of fidelity, not infidelity. So Revelation in chapter 19. In verse 7 through 9. Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 through 9. This book has to do with the past, present, and the future. So we're having a, a snapshot, a glimpse at something that it is to be made known to the church, to the body of Christ. He wants us to know and have knowledge of this wife, this woman, and to understand what she have done. And I talked a little about this the other night as we are talking about heaven and dying and, and, and whereas we have been told that everyone is there singing and shouting and cooking, they have angel wings, all kinds of stories we have been told that grandma and granddaddy, they are together and, and, and husband and wife are together. No, people are asleep. So again, entertainment can mess us up. Not here to entertain, but you learn. And know what your Bible says. This is your textbook. You have it in your hand. It's your manual. Right? It's the scriptures. It's your doctrine. It says in verse 7, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife has made herself ready. His wife, his lover, has made herself ready. She's dressed. His wife, his confidant. Wife is someone who's, who you see as a part of you, someone you yoke up with, someone you connect with. Jesus says, take my yoke and learn. He encourages us to yoke up way when we started the relationship. So we talk about a wife of grace. She's not any kind of woman. She's not any kind of wife. She's a woman that graces the grace. She respects the grace. She honors the grace. She, and she gives grace something to work with. And that's what I want you to see about this woman. This woman give grace something to work with. Because grace has to work with what you give it to work with. Grace don't work with anything. And Paul would say that. So this woman, again, have, I like when it says, have made herself ready. She made herself ready. That means she was busy in serving and obeying and honoring. I speak to you as that wife. He said, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. Granted means that something was bestowed upon, something was placed upon her, that she should be arrayed, dressed, and adored, and covered. It says in fine linen. Fine linen. And understand what was granted, what was given, what was ordered, that she should be arrayed in fine linen. Is your doctrine wife? Is your scriptures wife? Is your textbooks wife? That you and I should be arrayed. When you talk about going to heaven, nobody won't be up there where knowing anything. I shared the other night, according to the Gospel of Matthew 22 and 12, I believe, 11 and 12, you're going to find that the king had ordered a banquet and said, the king, God's kingdom is like unto a marriage where this king had ordered this great feast and invited everyone to come to his son's marriage. And we notice that in this, that one man showed up not having on a wedding garment, not having on fine linen. But apparently he came because he associated himself with heaven. Somewhere he connected with a relationship with God because he was there. It says heaven is like this. The kingdom of heaven is like that. People who want to be there do want to get in there. But you can't get in there wearing what you want to wear. Amen? So fine linen is what I want you to learn about. Fine linen. When he look at the guests, he look at the guests to see if you're wearing fine linen. Are you arrayed? What's being arrayed? Is it my body? What is it that he's looking at? Spiritually understanding this. Now, we know that man have a righteousness, but our righteousness, according to Isaiah 64, is a righteousness that he called filthy rags. Amen? There's some righteousness that you and I have that is called or looked upon as filthy rags. So that means we dress ourselves in filthy rags. 
We dress our minds in filthy rags. This wife's mind is nothing. Her mind is so covered in what's proper. Her feelings, her thoughts, her ideals, her imagination, her conversation, and anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. In this wife, she pulls it down. She don't play around with folly and foolishness. She don't entertain nothing outside of the textbook. She don't go along with anything that's not doctrine. She's not a harlot. She's not a whore. She's a wife. And that's doctrine. I'm not cursing up here. I'm not using bad words. It's just doctrine. It's your Bible. Teach your children. Teach your sons and daughters. Yes, you've got two types of women in the book of Revelation. One is good for harlots. And she birthed those kind of people. And then you have the one who's a wife who's committed, who's dedicated, and is loyal to the things, to the heart of God. So I want to encourage you, wife. I want us to understand who we are and who you serve. He says, and to her was granted. You know what something that's granted is handed to you? It's delivered to you? She's there, and when she's there, she's granted something because she made herself ready. You don't give something to someone who's not deserving of it. So she have made herself ready. And I can't stress it enough. You're in a time you want to make yourself ready. Two going to be in bed. One going to be left. And one going to be taken. Somebody going to be at the meal. Somebody going to be at the job. We're going to get a phone call that so-and-so just passed away. And nothing wrong with that. Now, is it? Nothing wrong because we do live and we do die, but we live again. But what's important is that you you're, you're made yourself ready. I've learned to behave like a wife. That's why when you hear me say I'm always right, I'm talking about my state of approval. I'm talking about a condition of my mind and my heart. I don't have time to not be right. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Clean. Notice how Lena is clean and white. I wonder who cleaned her. I wonder who cleaned her. Her lover. Her lover cleaned her. Her lover find her spots, according to Ephesians chapter 5. Repeating myself, because I want you to get this. I talked about this the other night, if you saw the live, live screen. Do you not know and thank him and praise him? First thing they said, let us be glad and rejoice. How many know when you look around, you look at us, we got a reason to rejoice. Yes, we do. He bathed me. He washed me. Did he bath you? He loved you so much. He knew what we was. But he wouldn't leave us in that condition. Amen? How many have wanted better or wanted the things of God? Clean and white. And for study, I do need you to go back and read Ephesians because what he does, he washes her with the water of the word. Amen? Now, what a lover. Look how much he loved us. He took time to wash her and bath her with the water of the word. And what was he washing away? Spots. Spots. Those four beasts around the, around the throne would start thundering on that. It's four beasts that carry thunder. They got fire in them. And if you read, if you go back up, let's go back up to verse, I want you to see this. Same chapter. Because we talk about when we get to heaven, what it's going to be like. We think we're going to be turning stuff now. God have already, it's going to be all about God. Amen. We're going to be falling down, worshiping, and saying, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. He said these words. Verse 3. Again, they said, hallelujah. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. Verse 4. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God. It says, Worship God. They fell down and worship God. They prostrated themselves and they worship God. Then it says, Worship God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen. Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants. And I've been talking about being servants of grace, grace for grace. Servants, servants of grace, honor, honor for honor, respect for respect. Have not God honored you? 
Amen. Honored your prayers, pitied you, mercies, knew every day. Then he says, all ye his servants, I have to say it again, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great, to the educated, to the uneducated, to the nobodies, to the somebodies. It's about praise. Now, I went there because I want you to see there's a big noise being made. I heard, as it were, the voice of great multitudes and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thundering. That's a lot. You know what thunder sound like around here, right? Now, can you imagine being up there bowing down and everybody's calling and saying hallelujah, boom, 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 and thunder's hitting. That's how big a dude this is. Amen? When they do the 4th of July, don't you get boom, 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 boom. We're celebrating, right? How many know when we get there, it's going to be a great celebration? Know why? You are there. The angels are there. The elders are there. The chairmen are there. The servants are there. The beasts are there. All of God's creation that love him and serve him, all the servants of grace are going to be there. All of God's children that love him and worship him are going to be there. And I can see those four beasts because those, those boys are bad. When I learned about those angelic beings, how they move, when they move, they don't have to look left or right because they got head, eyes on every side. And when they go up, they, they say their wings go up in unison. They contact each other. They got wheels up under them. It was hard for me to fathom. So they got lights run up and down in them, fire on the inside. So when all God's children get together, it's going to be a celebration. It's going to be you saying hallelujah, and they're going to say boom, boom. Thunder and lightning won't be there. Because God created this from his, for, for his self, for his glory. So I want to say to you as a wife, you are a wife of grace. A wife who honors and respects the will of your God and your Father. Encouraging you to stay close. Live and be in a place that your prayers have weight to it. Live and be in a place that your your. your your pity, your groaning, your, you, you can pity, you, you can ask for pity, he'll give you pity. Yes. Isn't that needful? Yes. You ever had to need God to have mercy on you? Yes. Amen? Yes. I want you to stay close. Yes. Children, stay close. Don't let nobody or nothing come between you and your great lover. This wife is committed. Now, the other one who's called the great whore, she's had an opportunity too. We all have an opportunity. Some is fidelity, some is infidelity. Some is loyal, some is not loyal. Some is devoted, some is not devoted. You don't let nothing take God's spot. Enjoy life, but don't let nothing take his spot. So we're going to admire her today because I want to see how did she do this and said it was granted her. we back at verse 8 now. It was granted, it was given her. Can you imagine? This is for you. This is for you. You're here now. You're at the wedding. This is for you. This is for you. He says, clean and white. Don't get, don't get past that one. Clean and white for the fine linen. Let me explain it to you. He says, it's the righteousness of saints. Oh, righteousness of saints. It's the righteousness of saints. See, saints are in a state of righteousness, which is your approval state. It's a state of approval. It's a state where you are correct in your thinking. Whatever is lovely, whatever is just, whatever is honest, what's a good report? Saints, that's all they think on. If it's not honest, they don't think on it. I'm going to say it again, wife. If it's not honest, if it's a lie, she don't think on it. If it's immoral, she don't think on it. Because her condition, she understands her condition because she studied to show herself approved unto God. That's why your Bible study, that's why reading of your manual and your strip, you need to know what the Bible says because guess what? She studies to show herself approved to God. Why? A workman that need not be ashamed. Do you not know the guest that showed up without a wedding garment got put out? Right? Because he thought he could wear anything there. In other words, when your mind comes before God, any and that, filth cannot be on your mind. Wickedness cannot be on your mind. I don't care for so-and-so cannot be on your mind. I hate black people. I hate white people. Can I be on your mind? <laughs> Not this wife. All the spots has been moved. So a wife 
the wife of grace is simply one who's a servant of grace, and they respect the grace. They honor the grace. And guess what? When you do that for grace, what grace do for you? You know what grace do for you when you respect righteousness? I'm going to show you what to do, explaining. You, when you live right, grace reigns. Grace, I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to favor you. I'm going to favor you and favor you. Grace is amazing. Grace is beautiful. How many want to just, just, just know that grace should never be disrespected because the Bible said don't be as Esau, a vain man, who failed the grace. Oh, you, you and I can fail the grace. Grace has been too good for me to be abandoned it. Not that it abandoned me, I abandoned it. So, God have always thought to have a wife. And the first wife proved to be unfaithful. The first companion proved to be unfaithful. You know the first wife was Adam? Adam? Didn't he tell her, and I'm saying it like that, and you need to say spiritual when I say her. I know it's a him, but it's a her. I know you, are, you consider yourself a male and female, but God called you a wife. Simply a companion, one that I yoke up with. That's what we are, right? And did, that, did he not give this man dominion? Give him everything, right? Now, there were some things that God couldn't do and, and can't do. That's why the wife was given, because it was some things that God couldn't do for the wife. Did you not know there's some things God just can't do for the wife? So he started the relationship with this, let us make man in our image and our likeness, and then let them represent us. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to make him a body to live in. I'm going to breathe into his nostril the breath of life. When I breathe into him, he should become a living soul. But he's a living soul without life. So I can't give him life, but I can tell him what life is at. (laughs) <laughs> now, I'm saying this because it's in your Bible. You need to go read it for yourself, okay? Now, he was considered a naked man, but he didn't know he was naked because God couldn't dress him. That was his job. How many know that God can't dress you? That's your job. He can't make you take life. You have to want it. So what he did, he put life in the garden. He hung it on a tree. But he also, he put something else in the garden that was forbidden. Right? So he couldn't dress him in life, and he couldn't dress him in death. But he dressed him in his image and likeness and built a relationship and a courtship, visiting him early in the morning. And gave prescription of what he wanted with the man, and wanted the man to go into the garden. We said he went in there to pull the the weeds, but it wasn't no weeds. (laughs) Not yet. And I don't think they ever hit the Garden of Eden. Now, we do know the word dress means to Till. It do means to till. It do means to worship. It means, in the Greek word, Hebrew word, it's called abad. Abad means that the individual had to bring something to pass. Yeah. I know there's milk and meat in here. I want you to understand some of you on meat, some of you on milk, but you can't stay on milk. You're going to need to get some meat. Okay? So you're going to have to want to read and fast because understanding what this wife did in the book of Revelation, what God have always wanted was a relationship. Yoking up have to do with companionship, right? Being equally joined together, right? Imagine having a creation that you created, but everybody don't love you. How many of there's some angels that didn't love God? Seraphim that didn't love God. Amen? Humans that do not love God. Proven, right? So God is holy and cannot make you. Cannot make us be faithful. Amen? So we talk about a wife of grace. How many know it's like to have someone who loves you equally? You can trust them, you can depend on them, and they can depend on you. You know, it's sad when you have someone you yoked up with. You can't trust them. You can't depend upon them. You better not call them too many times. (laughs) Don't wake me up at night. It's many things you'll find out in a relationship how close a relationship is. Amen. I'm not talking about little petty moments that we do have, because sometimes we're like, I'm tired. We are tired, but you still get up, right? Sometimes. So show how selfish we can be. But we want to say, I'm married, though. 
<laughs> a lover is a lover, good times and bad times. Amen? And so, God left him naked and told him what not to dress in. How many know Adam got dressed in death, which was forbidden? He got dressed in death because he sinned. And when he sinned, he gave death the authority to reign. I'm saying it, say it slow. I want you to get this. Because this wife won't let sin in her life because sin is a state of disapproval. Because God would never marry that which is sinful. So now they are being, she's getting the wedding garment because she has made herself ready. Meaning that she's made a choice. She's chosen life. So in the garden, when God come back, he said, where are thou? Lover, companion, significant other. In my paradise, where are you? You hiding from me? Imagine you with somebody you dearly love. You gave them dominion. You gave them the rule. You gave them authority. And they going to hide. You, you know something wrong with the relationship, right? Anytime there's hiding in a relationship, something wrong. Anytime you're hiding from your lover, something is wrong. You hear me? Do not ever hide from your lover. Harlots do that. Amen? Now, how many know that there's two women in the book of Revelation? Did you know one was called a harlot, a whore? And one is called, did you know that? Raise your hand. I just want to see your knowledge because some of you... Okay, yeah, it's real. Well, that's how it is in the real world. Some of us are faithful. Some of us are unfaithful. Okay? So, when God come back, the living soul is now a dead soul. He's dead in trespasses and sin. Now, sin, sin is what Broad death. So death like, I'm not going nowhere. Sin. I have the right to be here. Sin. I'm not going nowhere. Sin. I'm talking this, but I'm going to show you doctrine, so hang out with me, right? Sin like, you want to sin? Death say, I have the right to be here. Because you're in a state of disapproval. You're in a state that God can't do nothing with except hopefully call you call you out of the darkness and get you to repent and turn back. If you turn back, he can redeem you. But if he call you and you keep walking, ain't nothing he can do for you. And did sin and death have the right to say, I got it. I'm going to bear it. I'm going to bring it before the great white throne. Because you did hear about them not teach you how death bring people to the great white throne. And, and bring them to court and drop them off. Yeah. Oh, death is a bad boy. But death have the right to rule and reign. And death is also known, students, as the last enemy that Christ's going to deal with. But as long as you want to sin, death have the right to rule and reign and dominate. Don't you see it in our land? Yeah. Can't you see what's happening? Yeah. Because of sin. COVID, you, you, a shot, shot will make it go away. No, sin will make it go. Sin will make it stay. Yes. Righteousness will make it go away. Yes. Turning back to God is a plague. It's a pandemic. Oh, yeah. So, in this understanding that Adam got dressed in death, a living soul got wrapped up, tied up with death. And all of us was impacted by that move. Then you get a last Adam come in called a living spirit and make alive that which was dead. Raise your hand. If he's made you alive, he's made you alive in Christ, right? So you have put on wife Christ, right? Now you and I are in a state of approval. Now, if you're bold enough and you, in your growth enough, say with me, I'm always right. I'm always right. Now, that's heaven talking. 
And when I first said that, you ain't always right. I said, I'm right. My father said I'm right. I'm in a state of approval. If I die right now, I'm going to die right. It's, it's amazing how you try to get a saint to transform his mind. <laughs> it's hard. We fight against it. When I saw saying, I'm perfect, you ain't perfect. Ain't no man perfect. I said, okay, if we're not perfect, you ought to ask me what my issue is. <laughs> if I'm not perfect, I'm letting you know my lover that hadn't washed my spot, so you ought to, you ought to be careful with bothering me. Don't, 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 don't cross me. Because, see, my lover ain't, ain't done with me yet. And how many know because your lover ain't done with you, he still keep you from falling? Yes. So don't come up with these excuses now. Unto him to keep us from Yeah, I am by what I am by the grace of God. I'm not better. I'm just better. I'm not better. I'm just better. No, I'm not better. I'm just blessed. See? It's in between better and blessed. I'm not better than you. I'm blessed because of grace. Yes. Amen. And what that, what that water do, it washes the filth. From where? Where's it at? In my heart. And in my mind. And you can tell when my soul animates it. So again, a wife of grace, a wife of grace. You're a wife of grace. You're married. Right? And this wife in the book of Revelation, she's there and she's so honored because she's made herself ready. She prepared to be there. How many know he's going to prepare a place and you're preparing to be there? How many is preparing to be what he's preparing for you? Amen? I'm not going to accidentally get there. No, I'm planning to be there. And I'm going to get there by the grace because grace will reign. Now, since I've been saved, since I've been walking with God, have I missed it? But I hadn't practiced it. Amen. Say hallelujah. I have missed it, but I hadn't lifestyled it. When I missed it, I say grace. And grace reign. Because where sin abound, grace does much more abound. But grace don't give me a ticket to go off and play the fool. Because I'm a wife. Do it make sense? I, that's how you feel, Brother Carol. <laughs> Read your own textbook. Now, this is strong language. You're either wife or you're a whore. Whore just means someone who's not loyal, and they're not faithful, and they will exchange for any pleasure they can get from somebody else or something. They are not committed to the things of God. You have a textbook that you're supposed to be reading for yourself. Amen? Now, it's to feed you with the knowledge of the truth because a wife, again, a real wife, everything married ain't a wife. Everything wearing a ring in a way. And everything wearing a, 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 a ring is not a husband. It has to do with fidelity. Amen? So, in this, the wife is granted, is bestowed. It's like, this is for you. This is for you. She gets there because she made herself ready. When he sees that you made yourself ready, this is for you. Fine linen. Now, that has nothing to do with your robe. You're going to get a robe on top of your fine linen. A robe of righteousness only go on people who have fine linen. Why would you put fine linen on somebody, a robe on somebody who's not in fine linen? In the book of Revelation, chapter 7, I, mean, I couldn't say you, I want you to take note because I already taught you Wednesday night, but if you didn't listen Wednesday night, but listen. In chapter 7, you take a note. There's a number of people come to 144,000. They're going to be sealed in their forehead. And then it's going to come to a number of people that cannot be numbered. Cannot be numbered. They're going to get sealed in their forehead, and they're going to have white robes. Their souls on the altar who will be told to rest a little while long until they get the white robe. Right robes on top of your fine linen. Amen? Now do this with me. Say, my mind, my mind will be wearing. My heart will be wearing. My soul will be acting out his feelings in fine linen. 
And when you see me come with my white robe, it shows that I'm a worshiper who worship God with fine linen. Your mind is dressed in fine linen, right? Which is the righteousness. Amen. You heard the scripture say, without holiness, no man should see the Lord. Let me give you some more scriptures here. Feed my sheep. Feed, not entertain you. Righteousness have done me well. Amen. Take it off my filth have done me well. Asking him to wash my spots. And I thank him for being such a lover. Imagine that. Let me, let me, let me, let me show you that again. I, I preached it to you, but let me show you Ephesians chapter. So he take time to bathe his wife. Now, what a, who, who wouldn't want to be married to somebody who would bathe you? Right. No, you ain't right. Right? But he's so in love with you because he knows. He pities those of a broken heart. Come to Christ's spirit. Now, in Ephesians chapter 5, Christ loved the church, and I thank you for loving me Amen. and gracing me. Amen. That's why when it comes down to serving him, there's no limit. Amen. No limit. Your will be done. The state trooper said, you're supposed to be dead. I'll never forget it. He shined his light on the ground because he's looking for deer tracks because I lied. I wasn't saved at the time. He said, I was trying to tell him how this big truck flipped over on the interstate, and I said, a deer ran out in front of me. And I snatched the wheel, and I hit the bridge, and he said, I don't see no deer tracks because there was no deers. But his next words was, you're supposed to be dead. How many know God done spared a lot of us? Had mercy, pitied me. Yes. Not when I was a saint, when I was a sinner. Yeah, that's right. Amen? He's the same God doing the same thing. But I had to be willing now to change my worship. <laughs> yeah, you either worship God or you worship the devil. If you worship the devil, that's why you would go in the category of a harlot or a whore. Because you're not, crea- you're not faithful to the creator. Two kings, two kingdoms, two women. Two of everything, all right? There's life and there's death. In the garden, there was two trees. One would give you life, and one would give you, the disobedient would give you death. The tree was actually good for its purpose. There wasn't nothing wrong with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It was what was wrong when man didn't think deep in loving God and did what him indulged in himself. That's the problem. And that's the problem today. When we don't think deep, we don't dig deep on the things of God. Ephesians chapter 5, he says, verse 25, Husband, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church. And did what? Gave himself for it. Now, this wife that we talk about in the Revelation respects this move. He said that he might do what? Sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. He's so in love with us. He sees your spots. But he's not mad at you. He knows what he have can wash the spot, the contamination. He had to watch, clean me from my contamination. How many remember your contamination? I'm just going to shout out a few of them. Lying is contamination. Adultery is contamination. Homosexuality is is contamination. Zoophilia, pedophiles, all this is contamination. But he saw me. Amen? Amen. And then he took his water word and began to wash me. That's why they said hallelujah and there's thunder. Look what grace have done. Wonders. Wonders. Yeah, you don't have to go and die in sin. So I want you to see he washed the, by water by the word that he might present it to himself, right? A glorious church. So what happened in the book of Revelation? He's presenting, it's being granted himself. It's going to come a little bit more clear. When he sees you prepared yourself for him, then he's going to be bestowed. Like, when you get to the altar, you know how 
You connect. In the wedding, when she get here, what happened? He and she connect. Because she is wearing what? No, because she prepared herself. Fine linen is going to be bestowed on her. If you hadn't prepared yourself, made yourself ready, and walking in righteousness. So she's lifestyled it. So he sees that she's lifestyled it. He sees that her mind is lifestyled it. He, she, he sees her heart is lifestyled it. And now he knows, grant her this. You remember when Queen Esther realized, I can't go to the king if he don't reach out his scepter? I'll lose my life. Because it's a danger for me to go where I've not wanted. It's a danger for that person to show up in the book of uh, Matthew 22 and 12. I'm sorry, Matthew 22 and 12, where he showed up in the, as a guest, but he wasn't prepared. He wasn't ready. He said, friend. Why you call somebody a friend? Because you showed up like a friend. You, 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 you dressed like a friend. But I'm looking to see, I don't see fine linen. You are guests here without fine linen. He said, friend, how did you get in here not having a wedding garment? The book of Revelation, didn't they give us the wife get a wedding garment? Yes. Am I making this up? You talking about going to heaven? You better learn about a wedding garment. Yes. Let me say, tell you this. When you go, your gray hair can't go. Because it's corruption. Your wrinkles can't go because it's corruption. Your aching knees can't even go. That's why in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, he's going to make a change. You're going to get a new body in, in one atom. You can't even get, uh, ain't no two jerks, it's just boom. Because I'm not going to let nothing corrupt come where I'm at. Then you're going to get there and go from glory to glory to glory to glory. What we're doing now, we're taking off the foolishness, the filth of the flesh, our righteousness. I can't forgive them. I can't let it go. Uh, such, all these crazy things that we've done in the flesh, put it away from you. Okay? A wife of grace. Okay? And he said he's going to present her, he's going to present it to where? To himself. What kind? A uh, glorious. So in the book of Revelation, you're looking at a glorious wife. Honorable, respectful. She stayed in her state, place, and position. That's what she did. Now, he says, not having a spot, a wrinkle. You know what a wrinkle is, right? Yeah. What's a wrinkle? Poor to itself. I'm going to do me. I'm going to do me. Miss Lot was a wrinkle. I don't care what you say. I'm going to do me. Adam and Eve was a wrinkle. I'm going to do me. Why would you marry a wrinkle? Why are you marry somebody going to do themselves? They don't need you. <laughs> so that's why he looks at, the, at what you prepared, what you made ready, to see is it equal. And once he sees what you made ready, he will now give you the fine linen because you have made yourself ready in your heart, your soul, and your mind in agreement with his righteousness. All right? Now, let's go and see how this thing working in Romans. I want you to see that for a reason because you're a wife, you're a wife, Brennan, you're a wife. You're married to the Lord. He's married to you. He's your best lover. Phyllis, he's your greatest lover. But I'm dead and gone. He's there. Right? Can't nobody love you like he loves you. I can't bath you like he bath you. He get in your soul and mind and heart. I can only go so far. You dig deep. Go deep with the Lord. I'm deep into my husband. You better be deeper in Christ. Be deep in him. I'm not telling you not to be deep, but be, be, be deeper. <laughs> Let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 21, I believe. Romans chapter 5. When God's righteousness is revealed, it is not to be taken lightly. Okay? Some people didn't want to retain God in their knowledge, so God gave them over to themselves. Right. All right, once God's knowledge is revealed, you got to want to retain it. Yeah. Okay, we don't have time to go there today, but they didn't want to retain God in their knowledge. 
When God's righteousness is revealed from faith to faith, God's righteousness is revealed to the wife. So the wife now can prepare herself to yoke up at the day when he passed out fine linen. And the righteousness is Christ. Listen to this. Verse 21, that as sin has reigned unto what? Even so might grace reign when? Now, how many know you giving grace something to do or you giving death something to do? You, want, you got one of the two things going on in everyone's life. If you are a wife and married to the Lord, you take in the yoke, you learn, and you're in agreement with him, then guess what? You're giving grace something to do. What is grace doing? Reigning. Dominating. Favoring you. Grace reigns. When something reigns, it rules. Right? Now look at, we got two reigning. What's the other one that's reigning? Death reign because of sin. Grace reign because of? Y'all getting this? I'm saying it again. Grace can only reign when there is? Death can only reign when there is? Sin. Are we getting it? And what you don't want to do, because they all pay well. It's just what payment you want. You cannot get me to leave my state of righteousness. I tell my own self, you can shut up, and I lose myself from you. I have no agreement. When my flesh try to go to talking crazy, I say, no, inappropriate. Unbecoming and unlike Christ. I'm only going to address myself and commit myself to what is right. You ever have feelings that you know inappropriate? You ever get mad and you, mm-mm, shut up. I gave you keys to the what? Kingdom. And you got two kingdoms now. <laughs> So that's that piece. Oh, you understand? I just want to establish they both can reign, right? Brother, are you getting this? If you sin, death have the right to reign. Sin is criminal activity. So when Adam sinned, death said, this is my ground, this is my territory. I'm going to be here until the law show up. I'm going to rule and reign until Moses go up and talk to God. That's how long sin reigns. I'm sorry, death reign. Death dominates. Death is a hymn. Death rides a horse. Death takes you into a place and torment you. It's your doctrine. It's in your textbook. Do you know this? Death will overshadow your skin, your body, your house, and people look at you, you all right? Play with sin. Sin will ruin because death decays everything. You don't do right with your time, your talent, your money, everything about you, you're fine. Why is it in trouble all the time? I used to be like, Lord, let's go to chapter 6. Same book, chapter 6. Again, I'm not, I don't have a sermon, I'm just unveiling a message. So you can read and study for yourself. And I can say as a ministry of 30 some years, we have no sad story. No chickens, no fish, no cakes, no donuts, and no begging. If you don't want to pay your tithe, praise the Lord. You want to give your talent, praise the Lord. That's up to you. I don't have nothing to do with that. That's between you and your lover. See, but a faithful wife. Am I right? How many, how many know it hurt if, when, when you find your wife or your husband's not faithful? It's a hurting thing, right? But the worst thing you can do is try to make them love you. You don't force their hand. God ain't going to force us. Right? Do you force him? It's relationship. It's relationship. Saints, it's relationship. Study your own textbook. You're a glorious people, a glorious church. You're a wife. You're the sons of God. You're the salt of the earth. You are so many things I can just keep naming. And guess what? You are good for the earth. It's good for the church to be here. Romans chapter 6. Let us look. In verse 12, 
We're going to read down. A few verses. Verse 12, we'll start. And I'll stop. We get so far, we're going to stop. Because in all you're getting, get understanding. I'm, sp- I'm talking to a wife of grace, a woman who is a lover. Yeah, I'm calling you a woman in a sense because compatibility in the image and likeness that you are putting on Christ. Because Adam actually marred the image and the likeness. That's why when they beat Christ, he was so marred. And the Lord, I said, Lord, when you was born the way you was born, why was you ugly? Y'all know he was born unattractive. It said when you saw him, it's in Isaiah chapter what? 53. He said, when you see him, he had no form of calmness or beauty. When you, just, you ever saw somebody, they so ugly, you think, that can't be him. He said, because you were ugly. That's the image. You was unattractive. But I loved you. You was unappealing. But I loved you. Your spots was not interesting, but I watched them. I said, Lord, why was you? Why did you, why did you just come good looking? You weren't good looking. How many want to thank the Lord on that one? Now he made us take a different image because we accept Christ because he's showing and expressing. Sin have marred us. It was nothing appealing about us. But I love you when you you was yet sinner. And I ask you to do things. You tell me what you can't do, what you ain't going to do. That ain't for me. Come on now. You will need him before he needs you. Uh, we got just a few minutes. Just a few minutes. I want to establish this, and we'll get back to it later. I'm, I'm going to quit when we get so far. I'm going to stop because I, I'm not your entertainer. And I'm not the one to make you eat either. This is personal. Because if I was God, I would just make you do stuff. He said that's a violation. And that's a disrespect of who I am. If you don't, I don't have to have you. I get a rock. (laughs) Let not sin therefore reign where? Keep in mind, if sin reign, who else got a right to reign? Don't let it reign in your mortal body. Mortal, you know what mortal means, right? Your dying body, your ending body, all right? You have pleasure in it, but it's going to end. Tell somebody the party going to stop after a while. (laughs) You drop it like it's hot now, but one day you're going to stop dropping it. (laughs) Yeah, you you know that foolishness we get involved with? Because you're full of it right now. He said, remember that creator in the days of our youth before the evil day come. You ain't got it no more. What you going to do now? Go somewhere and sit down, right? <laughs> that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Obey it. That's why we've got to talk about two women. Some is called fools and some are called wise. There's two virgins, right? What? Some are what? Some are foolish. And verse 13 says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness. And this is what the wife did in the book of Revelation. She never yield her what? Her members. How many know your members? Your members like you. My flesh have members. My members have an affinity for me. They like me like, Rick, what about this? I said, what about it? I'm dead to you. I don't owe you nothing. What about this feeling? What about that feeling? That feeling is inappropriate. I don't owe you nothing. I'm dead to my flesh. See, Christ delivered me. So that's a wife that had to prepare herself to even deal with her own flesh. Because I wanted the Lord to deal with my flesh. Lord, take it off. Take it away. He said, no, you deal with it. You put it to death. I gave you power to become my son. I'm just having a moment. So I'm just, you better stop having moments. I just had to get them straight. You better learn to be quiet. Amen. Because you're still full of yourself. What kind of wife? Are you going to show out here? You'll show out there. Amen. You have no self-control here. You won't have no self-control there. Because this woman is a very virtuous woman. They say, who can find one looking at him right here? 
You have to go to Proverbs 31. In the spirit realm, I am looked upon as a virtuous one. Right? Just simply, I am, I'm in a connection in relationship and companion of the Most High God. Right? Ain't nothing should be raggled about your life. You have a raggly mouth, raggly emotions. Right? Your members, adultery is a member. Did you know that? Lying is a member of the human born nature that Adam sinned with. He says, of unrighteousness, because when they come up, all they want to do is talk about what's not right. He says, unto sin, but yield yourselves unto who? God, as what? Those that are what? Alive from the what? Dead. And your members as instrument of what? Righteousness unto what? God. That's how the woman is going to get fine linen, because she yield herself not unto sin, but unto righteousness as one who is alive from the dead. I was dead in trespass and sin, but Christ quickened me and made me alive. Amen? I'm going to stop here, and, but we have more to pick up from when I do talk back with you. But I want you to know that Adam, God couldn't dress him. That's why he left him naked. It was up to him to dress. It was up to him to come and bring it to pass. The word abad in the Greek, in the Hebrew word, it have many definitions. Because in that garden, he's supposed to come a bondsman, a bond, one who will yoke up and be a bond servant. Remember Paul talking about he was, a, he was in bonds with God, with Christ? He said, I'm, a, I'm a, a prisoner of the Lord. Well, the first Adam should have become a prisoner of someone who's in the custody of Almighty God. How many know this wife is in the custody of her lover? Amen. How many is in bonds with the Lord? Okay. And for those who are married, we understand being yoked up and bonded with people, right? You go to get something, you start to ask my husband. Babe, I'm about to buy a car. What you think? I want to go in the fridge. What you think? <laughs> See, when you ain't in bonds, you got something to say. Your disrespectful self. <laughs> but when you're bonded, you said, baby, it's not a problem. Because there's a great honor and respect for the intelligence that your lover has. See, <laughs> bless us, Father, bless us. Okay? Now listen, because see, you want to wear the wrong garment and think you're going to get in. This is why it's going to be important that you have your mind transformed. This woman have a transformed mind. She no longer wear the style of the world. She have a new mind. Amen? So God bless us today and God keep you is my prayer. And Father, I thank you again for your word. Your word is designed to come in and minister and to feed us. Father God, feed us with the heavenly food, the milk from heaven, the meat from heaven, Father. We want to grow. We want to develop. I want to become my best you in Christ Jesus. Father God, I come now to prepare myself and make myself ready that it will be granted to me to have fine linen. Father God, I do not want to show up wearing my filthy righteousness. So I ask now that the Holy Ghost come in and set a fire today, Father. Come in and purge out everything that's not like you. Purge it out of me. Every spot, every blemish, everything, Father, that's not of you. Let your holy word and water wash it away. And then, Father, I'm going to draw to myself in these last days. Father God, help me move my wrinkles. Oh, yes, somebody, move my wrinkles, Lord. You know me better than I know myself, Father God. Because the time will come when you will have to choose to live or die. You want to buy and sell and trade? You're going to have to take the mark of the beast. And he that seeks to save his life, going to lose it. So these are the days ahead. We're in a time and place you want to walk and be worthy of the vocation where you've been called into. Be pleasing unto the Lord. Ask the Lord, say, Lord, I know my words of my mouth have not been right. Father, I thank you right now for purging me. Let fire hit me now. Let the fire hit my heart and my mind, Father. I have not done right by you, Father. Let your fire hit me right now, Father. Thoroughly purge my floor, God, thank you, Lord. by your spirit. Father, we thank you for every soul that's not saved, that you would draw them by your spirit. From the north, south, east, and west, Father, let your Holy Ghost do a great work and sanctify the hearts of the people. Have you done it for me? We know you'll do it for them. Yes. Father God, we thank you now. Thank you for this great house and every great servant and everyone who's committed to you to serve you to make sure your business is taken care of. Yes. And Father God, we thank you right now. Yes. As we close this part, we release into the hands of your evangelist, Father God. 
Father God, use your servant to pray and to speak, Father God. We have time to wait, Father God. You know what's coming? We don't. You see the next accident? We don't. You know the next doctor visit? We don't. So, Father God, prayer is needed now. And we thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Enhance the hands of Sister Butler.